when the party retained the seat with an increased majority, though only 20% of the electorate actually voted. Labour, who held the seat until 1994, were pushed into third place by the Conservatives. The by-election was caused by the death of the former MEP, Dr Alan McCartney. Our Scotland political editor, Brian Taylor, reports from Aberdeen. Ian Stewart Hudgden, 57,445. It is only a European by-election. The turnout was low, but the SNP beat Labour into third place and drew a wider lesson for Scottish politics. London Labour imported cabinet ministers to talk Scotland down and to try to undermine the confidence of the people of our country. This is a tremendous victory for Scotland, for Scotland's party. The Tories, without a single parliamentary seat in Scotland, drew comfort from a minor revival. The tide has turned. We've shown that we were up and fighting fit and we've fought back. For Labour, a poor result as their city voters stayed at home and question marks too over the candidate who was caught out over misleading claims that she was born in the constituency. But no wider message, she insisted. Because of the disappointing turnout, I don't see what we can draw from this. Four in five people have sadly stayed at home. I think that's a great disappointment, being somebody who has spent so much of their time in European affairs, that Europe is still not a vote grabber. Well, we are happy with this result. Our share of the vote has gone up by 2% in what was obviously is a Labour SNP contest and where the Labour vote collapsed. And we were very lucky not to be squeezed. But the day belonged to the Nationalists. Defeat for the SNP would have stalled their campaign for the Scottish Parliament next May. Victory keeps them on course and intensifies the contest in Scottish politics. Now here in Aberdeen by the gold, silver and bronze in this uh, European poll. Ian Hushin, first of all, congratulations on your victory. Well done here, a good result. But you can't draw a wider lesson from this, can you? A 20% turnout, four and five stayed at home. It's a, a turnout which is higher than the average in a European uh, parliamentary by-election in the UK and it's clearly a spectacular victory for Scotland's party uh, and a dismal rejection of, of London Labour and their nat bashing tactics. But nonetheless, you, you held the seat. You, you, you could have done no, no less than, than, than hang on to a seat which was held by your, your, your former deputy leader of the party. Well, we increased our share of the vote, we increased our majority uh, against uh, all the predictions and uh, we clearly uh, have been accepted and given a, a vote of confidence, a resounding vote of confidence by the people of the North East. Stuart Stevenson from the Tories, it's, it's an indication perhaps of the desperate state your party has reached that in a seat you once held you're jubilant about coming second. Well, it's a fantastic result for, for us to see Tories with a smile on their face. You know, it's almost a new experience, and it's certainly one that I will savour. We predicted that uh, the fight back for the Scottish Conservatives would start here in North East Scotland, and we've been vindicated. What do you think brought down the Labour Party? Well, I think people have now put their trust back in the Scottish Conservative Party. They see that we are a Scottish party with Scottish policies made in Scotland. They see Labour as being manipulated from London. Kathleen Walker Shaw, a disastrous result for your party. You, you, you held this seat until a few years ago. Well, a disappointing turnout, as we've all said. Uh, four in five people stayed at home in this election, which I think is, is a sad reflection of how um, you know, people are still not understanding how important Europe is. But clearly, but clearly Labour voters were more inclined to stay at home than Conservatives or SNP, who managed to push you into third place. As I say, given such a low tone, turnout, I think there's very little that, um, in terms of conclusions that any party can you, draw from do this you accept, Do you accept personal responsibility at all? The leaflet that said you were born in Aberdeen when in fact you weren't? There were no leaflets saying I've been very clear that I'm from an Aberdonian family with strong North East roots. And, uh, and that is very evident, has been very evident in this campaign. No, the problem with this campaign is that we have tried to raise issues, serious issues of importance to people in the northeast of Scotland which haven't been debated. And I hope that in the next six months up to the Scottish Parliament elections that these will be thoroughly debated as the people of Scotland deserve. Uh, Ian Hush well, I'm delighted that uh, this uh, election has gone this way and that we are now uh, poised for uh, spectacular success in the run-up to the May elections for Scotland's Parliament. And I certainly look forward to taking part in the debate, in the campaign that leads up to that. Well, people predicted it would be a two-horse race. It's turned out to be a two-horse race between the Conservatives and the Nats. But that's not a, a, a perspective that one could expect perhaps more generally. But uh, the three of you, thanks very much indeed for joining us. And with that, back to Justin in the studio. And thank you.